You can see here we've got our Bit Phoenix Ghost. Uh, it's a great chassis to be able to work with. And uh, a couple of things that we want to keep in mind when we're installing the actual motherboard inside the chassis. So you can see right here, there are multiple contact points uh, that are risen. And that allows you to go ahead and take the included screws. Uh, so I have one of these right here. Uh, and go ahead and affix the motherboard in place and go ahead and screw it in uh, to go ahead and have it all inside as far as uh, installed. Now, right in the center, you can see that they already have a pre-affix screw. This is great because it allows you to go ahead and have the board fairly secure in place so that you can go ahead and attempt to screw in the rest of the screws. You do kind of want to keep a little bit of a hold it and keep that in mind. Um, but with that, that pretty much is all the kind of initial information you need to keep in mind on the inside of the motherboard itself. Now, you do kind of want to do a quick count in terms of just considering how many um, headers you're going to have to screw into. Uh, by default, most motherboards are usually going to be either eight or nine. And that's also going to be reciprocated on the motherboard. So in a moment here, we're going to show you um, those uh, uh, spacers and thread points on the motherboard. OK, guys, so you can see here we have our Z87 Pro motherboard. And if we take a look at the top, we can see one thread right here. There's another thread right over here. And there's another thread right over here. So we would essentially just want to count those threads to verify how many screws we're going to need to be able to successfully install this inside of the chassis. Make sure to separate those screws beforehand so that you have them ready for when you're going to go ahead and install them into the chassis, you have them right there at hand. So with that, let's actually go ahead and get this motherboard installed into our BitPhoenix Ghost. OK, guys, so we've got our Z87 Pro motherboard here. We've got our Bit Phoenix Ghost, and we're now going to go ahead and install this guy inside the chassis. So uh, normally, I would recommend that you probably lay it down to go ahead and give you the most flexibility and control. But uh, you know, if you've got a great chassis like this and you have a centralized pin to hold the motherboard in place, you can go ahead and do this vertically. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up. Make sure we're in line with the IO shield. Get this to thread into the center hole and push in a little bit there. And we just need to reseat it one more time. And there we go. We've got a, a nice even setting. It's rested in place there, and so we're okay. So you want to make sure that this is pretty much flush against the entire IO shield. You don't want to see any movement or flexing, okay? And from there, you pretty much just want to take each one of the screws that you have and get them screwed into uh, the thread points for the board. So usually I like to try to go in a little bit of a kind of a diagonal pattern. So I'm going to go here with the bottom hand of the board first. We're going to go ahead and go back up top. OK, at that point, we've probably got the board at least fairly rested in place. We're just going to go ahead and go back again to the opposing corners. This is where, as you see, a longer screwdriver is helpful in terms of giving you just a little bit more flexibility and being able to get it angled in there, be able to work with it, and get it screwed in. Okay, at that point, we've got uh, four screws, each one for each opposing corner. So we're just going to finish wrapping it up, and we're going to have our motherboard successfully installed. Okay, and then we've got one more for the opposing side. And here, guys, once again, you want to be careful. You don't want to over torque the screws. Just want to keep it in place. You know, essentially just get about finger tight, maybe a little bit more than finger tight, but no need to overtly over torque the board, over stress it, create any uh, bowing or flexing. One more there at the top, and then lastly, one at the bottom to round things out. Okay, guys, we've gone ahead and successfully installed our motherboard inside the chassis.